Thank you. <clears throat> okay, this presentation is a little different than what I normally do, um, you know, typically about the Nurdle Patrol. One thing that uh, I've noticed over the last six months is um, that there is no data on, on Nurdles on railroads. And so this is one of the main ways that they transport these plastic pellets. Uh, you know, so, so why is nobody talking about it? Well, uh, I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, so, uh, who knows what a nurdle is to begin with, I guess. Okay. 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 There's like three people that don't. So, for y'all, <laughs> I created this slide. So, um, uh, nurdles are small plastic pellets. You're the basis of everything plastic. It's a raw material to everything that uh, you own uh, that's plastic. Uh, it gets out into the environment, uh, either at the manufacturing site or during transportation, or once it gets to the factory, where they, they're actually going to uh, melt the plastic down into a product, you know, put color to it, mold it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is what they look like. Uh, they're not just uh, small white pellets, you know, they come in almost every shape and size. And uh, depending on how long they've been out into the environment, uh, they can color towards the yellow or they can actually have real color in them so they can be uh, actual colors. And so we've, uh, this is just sort of an example uh, here at the bottom of what they look like. Um, we know that uh, there's been a problem for decades and decades. Uh, back in 1992, the Environmental Protection Agency came out with a report called Plastic Pellets in the Aquatic Environment, Sources and Recommendations. This is a PDF online that you can Google. What they knew about in 1992 was that there was over 80 species of shorebirds that were consuming these uh, pellets. Uh, there was uh, four species of sea turtles uh, that were consuming these uh, and uh, fish. And so, you know, there's a couple of bad things with these. Uh, the nurdles, when consumed, if they eat enough of them, it can uh, twist their intestines around and the animal can starve to death. Uh, what you see right here in the middle, the black and white photo, is an intestine of a, a shorebird. And there's probably 10 to 12 pellets in there. So the animal died from that. Uh, you know, if they, if they eat one or two, probably just passes right on through. Um, and then these things also can absorb... Uh, harmful chemicals, you know, PCBs, DDTs, things like that. And so, you know, if, uh, say a fish eats these things and it gets into their stomach and then do those chemicals come off of the nurdle and then through the stomach lining and, the, and then the muscle tissue that we're eating? You know, we don't have that answer yet, but there is some research going into that. So maybe we'll have that soon. But, you know, we worry about um, that's sort of the health impacts for humans but then, you know, the, the animals eating these things, you know, there could be uh, impacts to them as well from the, the chemistry side of things. Uh, so we, we set up this simple methodology, and then this is where I'm going to get into the, the railroads, is the methodology is uh, you go out for 10 minutes, you look for nurdles, and if you find nurdles, you kind of say where you found them. And so it's either the, the new strand line or the old strand line. Well, the same type of concept can be done on a railroad. It can actually be done anywhere, you know, rivers, lakes. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be by the water. It's, it's for 10 minutes looking around for these. So, um, you know, early on when we started uh, looking for nurdles, uh, for, I'm not, I don't remember exactly why we looked at a railroad, um, but I found nurdles the first time we had looked at a railroad. I was thinking, oh man, okay, this totally makes sense because we're telling people, you know, they're transported by, you know, rail. Um, and so now there's been over 80 surveys that have been done along railroads in multiple states. And most of those have been in Texas. And there's, there's nurdles at almost all of those, not all of them, but uh, about 97% of them have nurdles at them. So when you go to nurdlepatrol.org, you put in your 10-minute your, um, your survey in there. This is what shows up on the map. So anyone can pull this up. Uh, it's printable, so you can print it. You can zoom in and out. It's kind of like a Google Earth type platform. Uh, but the colors uh, signify what the concentration of pellets are. And so greens are zero. And so you'll notice there's uh, quite a few greens over here in Florida. And then as you go further west, um, you, the concentration gets higher. And so these are all for one person for 10 minutes collecting by hand. And so you get to the yellows, and then you get to the purple. The purple's over 1,000 in 10 minutes. And so you'll notice that the further west you go, um, it's higher concentrations, right? Well, the further west you go, there's also um, a higher number of plastic manufacturing sites. Until you hit the mecca of all 
plastic manufacturing, and that is in uh, Houston. So let's zoom in to Texas to see what's going on here. Um, so typically if you go out to the beach, and um, I know that uh, St. Stanislaus was here uh, um, doing some surveys yesterday at the beach, and they probably found quite a few nurdles. Uh, but this what all along the shoreline here, that's like if you go to the beach and find them. But if we really want to try to figure out where these nurdles are coming from, you know, we need to go up into the watershed. We need to go towards the manufacturing sites. We need to go along to see uh, where, if maybe the railroads is where they're coming from. Is there a plastic distributor? They don't necessarily need to, you know, be making plastic. They just can receive them, and that could be a source of the pellets. And so that's what you see a lot of when you start looking inland. And so let me zoom in here. I created this. This is... Uh, railroad sites only that were, uh, have data on them. And so you can see even all the way out here in Alpine, 42 uh, nurdles were found um, in a 10 minute period. But look, all the way up here in Dallas, uh, some of the other states, and so there's quite a few. Almost every uh, railroad you look at uh, will have them if they transport plastic along that line. Now this is another view of it. This is zoomed in, kind of where we're at here. Uh, Port Aransas is right up here. Uh, this is Corpus Christi. Um, I think my mic went out. Okay. Um, and so uh, if you look down here, these are all railroads. So this is a railroad that goes uh, all the way from Houston and down uh, to the valley. And uh, everywhere th along here we have found um, plastic pellets. Now we did a... We did a project um, about uh, six months, well, it was probably a year ago now, uh, with Dr. John Fei Liu in uh, Tao Tao, who I saw, uh, he's over here. Uh, we went to a number of railroads, and one thing we started looking at was these uh, bear patches along the, the railroads. And you know what we found there? Those bear patches were ant mounds, so harvester ants were there. And the harvester ants are bringing the plastic pellets to their mound. And you'll look around and there's, uh, I guess to prevent vegetation from growing uh, around the mound, they've got uh, little pellets all over the place, like rocks. Well, these uh, plastic pellets are exact same size. So you could go there and you could just load up. And for this particular project, we were trying to get, you know, at least 300 pellets uh, to be able to look at the, what, the chemicals that are absorbed on them. And so that was a perfect place to go because all, the ants did all the work for us. You know, so if you're in the south where there's harvester ants, uh, you want to look for those if you're around the railroads. So I'm going to tell you how they, um, uh, why we're finding them along the railroads. This is your typical uh, pellet hopper. And so there's four different silos in it. And so they store uh, the pellets in each one of these silos. And they're either, how they fill these up at the manufacturing site is either gravity flow, so they just uh, dump the pellets in from the top, or they pneumatically blow them in. So there's a six inch corrugated tube that they air blow them inside of there. These are real distinct too. You can tell from the side what they look like. They kind of look like uh, the ones that they would put dirt in and things like that, but how you can tell the difference is because of these four caps that are on here. And so this is where they pneumatically blow in the, the pellets. Um, and, and even from Google Earth, you can tell because the top here, these um, top hatches, they're real distinct from looking at Google Earth. And so you can tell looking at a manufacturing site whether they manufacture oil and gas or they manufacture uh, plastic pellets. And so this is a good way if you're looking at trying to go out and find a place where you live, if you live inland, and you want to know whether there's plastic around there, then um, you, know, you go around their fence line and look where their stormwater is. And uh, I have yet to be to a facility that has not had plastic in their, uh, plastic pellets in their stormwater uh, system. And that's because they're hard to contain, they're small. So uh, if you look here, um, this is uh, what the caps look like. This is the cap off, and then you'll see uh, plastic pellets on the ground here. And it's because they're hooking up a tube, taking a tube off. And so there's a great opportunity for pellets to fall down. And so if they don't have a, a, a pail there to catch them, then this is what, what it'll look like. Um, now, the problem, uh, I've been told by the plastic manufacturing companies that there are no plastic pellets 
that get out on the rail car uh, once the car is sealed up and it's going to its destination. The problem is when the pellet cars are coming back from when they've been emptied. And so this diagram here sort of explains some of that. So this, is a, a, this blue hose here is a six inch corrugated tube that's pneumatically blowing into the hopper car. As the, uh, the pellets are pneumatically blown through here, it, it, it can melt some of the plastic pellets. Am I good on time? Yeah, you got two minutes. Uh, oh, two, oh, two minutes? I got 10 minutes left over here. <laughs> these, these plastic, the friction creates these angel hairs and, um, and small pieces of uh, plastic in here that can catch actual pellets. And so I kind of drew this, drew this little diagram. They could empty these things. So this is what an empty car would look like. But then you have these angel hairs that have trapped these other uh, pellets in here. So whenever this thing is going back to the manufacturing site to be filled, um, these things are, if they don't put the caps on and they don't close the valves, these pellets are, are falling out. Uh, and so that's why we're finding them along railroads. Now there is a program called Zero Pellet and Powder Loss Program, and they have videos that they show their um, folks that are working on emptying these of how to seal them back up. Even when they're empty, they need to put a seal on them to close them back up. Here's just a close picture. I've got some great video and pictures of harvester ants um, that are that are uh, carrying these pellets around on their on their mound. Pretty cool stuff. Um, Latest data uh, here is we've got over 5,000 volunteers, uh, close to 12,000 surveys have been completed so far at over 5,000 sites. We've got 152 partners that we work with and uh, there's been over 800 teacher kits. And so if you wanna know more about those, just go to nerdlepatrol.org and it's on the homepage. It's, there's free kits for organizations that wanna get involved and teachers that wanna have uh, kits to teach their students about plastics getting to, into the ocean. Um, I'm not going to talk about this because Neil McQueen's going to talk about the policy, but the end goal for Nurdle Patrol is taking all this information and showing that there's a problem so that we can actually do something about it, and that's through changing laws from changing policy. Okay, future plans. We've got some videos coming up. We've got some expeditions we're looking to, uh, to do along the Mississippi River, and then you're going to see some differences in the phone app coming in May. Uh, that will have all the data included on it. Right now you can download nerdlepatrol.org just to include your, to put your data in, but it's gonna change where you can see it all in one place. And then a uh, website as well. Okay, and with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you.